Do you heart charts like I do? I think you do if you are watching this video and you follow my channel. We love DataViz, visualization, PowerPoint, Excel, all those good things. I wanted to jump on today and show you how you can think about using PowerPoint to create art and, and other items way beyond just slides. So I have a little sticker shop up uh, on Teespring and you can go ahead and purchase one of these stickers if you like. I'll put the link above and below in the comments. But I love these sort of I heart chart um, sort of uh, stickers that I've created here. And I used only PowerPoint to create them. So you can do the exact same thing. And this is gonna be a great tutorial for anyone who's thinking about using or creating their own images if you have things like newsletters or websites or you wanna create your own swag items for workshops or things like that. So I love these die, cut, these die cut stickers, they're super cool, but this image here was only created in PowerPoint and I wanted to show you how I did it. So I'm gonna go over here to PowerPoint. Here's the finished product. This is just one grouped item uh, here, uh, a, a whole group of items here in PowerPoint. We have a couple circles, we had an icon, we cut out a mask from the circle, we formatted the circle with a kind of a really nice gradient uh, orange and yellow fill. We have a couple text boxes on top and that's all there is to it. So here is my blank side. I'm gonna pan back, we're gonna zoom back here to see the pasteboard. These are all the items that make up that sticker. So I have this circle here that I just formatted as a gradient. So remember, right click, format shape. And then over here on the fill colors, you can see I clicked on that gradient fill. And then I just kind of worked with some of the different gradient preset stops. I created a, cus uh, a few custom colors here and just sort of worked with how that gradient might look. So I kind of like that darker orange feel kind of going up into the orange. So if you click on that gradient fill, you can go ahead and click on your own, you uh, create your own colors, put your own colors in there and create your own gradients. Now I have another circle that's just a little bit smaller than this circle here. And I just set it to no fill. When I, when I was over here in the format shape menu, we set it to no fill, so there's no color inside. And I had the outline set. If you click on the line here, I said solid line and it's white and the width is four points. You could adjust that however you want to. Now what I did, what I wanted to do is put them on top of each other so that it kind of has this really nice sort of border effect, white border effect inside. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just click and drag, oops, let's see if it lets me do that. I'm gonna click and drag over both of these items. Make sure that all those, the, everything in the circles are, are dragged over like that. So both of them are now selected and I'm gonna push Control G to group them. Now that creates one, one big shape here. Now I'm gonna go over here, put it down in the middle of my slide. And what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm gonna push Control shift G, and that's gonna ungroup them. Because I forgot that what I wanna do is I wanna create a mask with this icon. Now this is just a heart icon that I got from PowerPoint. If you go up to insert tab and then click on the icons tab here, you can go ahead and search for any icon that you want. Just search, I just searched heart, and then you can see this heart icon is what I got. You're gonna insert that heart. Now, the thing is I want to, now I could just leave this on top if I didn't wanna have any sort of background, but remember over here on my chart, um, on my chart sticker, I have this sort of pie chart effect inside that heart. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna create a mask with this circle. I wanna basically cut out a heart, a heart shape from this circle here. And what we're gonna do, oops, I'm gonna undo that positioning. The thing is, you need to first create, uh, you need to first make the icon a shape. So if your icon is an SVG image, you want it to be a normal sort of a shape in PowerPoint that you can work with because we're gonna use the merge shapes tools to create a mask, um, to create that cookie cutter effect. So we're gonna right click. If you have an icon like this, you're gonna right click and you're gonna say change, you're gonna say convert to shape right here. It's gonna convert it to shape, and then you see those outlines of the border go from all the way out here right to the shape. So now this is just a normal shape here in PowerPoint. I'm gonna resize it just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna lay out my, my sticker so that I know exactly where I want that uh, shape to be. Now this is just a text box. It's an I for I love. And then this is just my word chart. This is just another text box here. Remember, if you want a text box, go to the insert tab and then click on insert text box right here. When you insert that, you'll insert it, type in your text, put in, uh, change the font to however you want it. I want a nice big chunky font. I think this font is just the Microsoft default, the new Aptos, Aptos Black, very nice. 
So I'm gonna make sure that this is positioned in exactly the way that I want it, the eye and the heart. And let's see, let's make the heart just a little bit bigger, just so it's perfectly right there. So you're gonna position it however you like. Now I wanna create that cookie cutter mask. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the back, the back circle, make sure that back circle is uh, selected. Since I have no fill, in this front circle, if I click in the middle, it's gonna actually click on the back circle, and that's what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, hold down the Shift key, and select the heart. Now we're gonna go up to the Merge Shapes tools. Now I have added the Merge Shapes tools to my Quick Access toolbar because I love doing text ma or doing masks like this. So I have it right there in my Quick Access, uh, Quick Access toolbar. But you will be able to access it from the Shape Format menu. And then right over here in the Insert Shapes, you'll see this Merge Shapes menu. Now, if you wanna add this to the Quick Access Toolbar, all you have to do is right click and then click on Add to Quick Access Toolbar. Mine is grayed out because I've already done this. So go ahead and do that, that's a time-saving trick. Click on the Merge Shapes menu and I'm gonna say, let's see, I'm gonna say Subtract. And then when we subtract it, you now see, if, I'm, if I were to move that back shape, now it has an actual cookie cutter heart from it. So the, the actual uh, shape of the heart is gone. If I click here, I can't move anything around there because it's actually a mask. It's cut out from that circle, perfect. So now I wanted to create this sort of pie chart effect in the background. Now you see this pie chart looks pretty wonky. I'll show you, I'll show you why in just a second, but let's go ahead and just insert a pie chart. So go to the insert tab here and then go to the charts button and then I'm gonna go down to the pie chart. Where is it? Pie chart menu right here. We're just gonna go ahead and insert a default pie chart. Now the great thing about PowerPoint is when you insert a chart, it gives you some sort of stock data. It gives you some kind of default data so that you can see how that pie chart is set up. It doesn't matter for me. If you wanted to change the, the way the pie slices looked, you could go ahead and just update these numbers here. They're totally meaningless for this purpose, but it would be if you wanted you know, just two slices, you could delete one of these rows. Uh, or two of these rows. If you wanted just um, two slices, uh, or two slices, you delete two rows. If you wanted three slices, delete one row, all of that, all of that good stuff. I don't really care about this, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out. Now, on this default chart, we have some things that I don't want, that I don't need. I don't need a title, so I'm just gonna click on that, push backspace and delete it. I don't need the legend, push backspace, delete that. Now, what I wanna do is I actually, I could uh, move this chart to the back, and say right click and send to back. Now it's behind my chart and now you can see we do this. But you can see some of that pie is kind of overlapping there on the back. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to resize the pie and we could do it just like this. Now that looks actually really good. But the thing is, here's the problem. This border right here I don't want this border to impact my final shape. And if this border is outside of that circle, it might actually treat this as a bigger image than it actually is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut and paste this chart, but we're gonna cut the chart out and we're gonna paste it in as an SVG image. So let's go ahead and right click and cut. Now go up to the paste special menu right here, paste, paste special. And now I'm gonna say picture SVG. I want this to be a picture now. I don't want it to be a live chart. We're gonna say okay, and it gives us the SVG. Now, remember, an SVG has to be ungrouped. So I'm just gonna push Shift Control G to ungroup everything. We say yes to this menu. And now you can see those borders kind of went away there. So now this is actually just still a group shape. If I wanted to ungroup it even further, I would push Shift Control G again. And now you can see it ungroups, it ungrouped everything into its component shapes. So it was each of these slices is now its own shape. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and just push Control G to group all of that. And again, I'm gonna make sure that this is on the back layer, so send to back. We're gonna go ahead and put that behind the chart and see what it looks like. And you can see there's still a little bit of that um, border outside of the circle, but let's just see if I were to, I'm just gonna decrease the size just a little bit here. We'll put this there and it's gonna be, I'm just gonna nudge this into place. You can see I wanted to fill those chart, the chart a little bit more, fill the heart. So on this right, on this uh, blue slice here, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and I'm gonna say edit points edit those points, and once you do that, we can go ahead and drag it over, perfect. So I'm gonna do the same thing 
with this blue slice here, edit points, and then drag it up. And maybe I'll just drag this a little bit over there. And the same thing with this teal slice. We're going to go ahead and edit points. And I'm going to drag that over there. So it doesn't really matter how you do it. Maybe I'll do it a little bit with the red slice too. Perfect. And now from here, we can go ahead and adjust the color. So just like any other shape, the format shape menu pops up. We'll say a really dark orange for this one, maybe a bit of a lighter orange for this one, even lighter. Just kind of give it that nice effect there. And maybe I want to make this more of a yellow. Perfect. So this is now my sticker. But what we need to do now is group everything here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag, click and drag over. So everything is selected. Push Control G to group. And now it's like one, it's as if it's one big shape. I can move the whole thing around. Now what we need to do is just right click and save this as a picture. So right click and click on save as picture. When you do that, you'll save, you'll save the file as a picture, save it anywhere on your desktop. It'll be uh, an image file that way. And then what you can do is you can go over to a site like Teespring or you could go over to just Google stickers or sticker generator and you will get tons and tons, probably thousands of places that you can then upload that image and create your own sticker. So I think it's kind of a cool little effect. And if you want one of these iHeartChart uh, stickers, I'm going to keep on uploading more of them uh, when, I, when I have time and when I kind of just think it's fun. Um, so go ahead and, and buy one. They're perfect little gifts uh, for you to put on your laptop or uh, anywhere else that you sort of like to, to uh, put stickers. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of inspiration on how you can use PowerPoint to make graphics and images for things like swag items, like stickers. You can do this exact same uh, treatment for things like website images or newsletter images that you want to create custom images that are just uh, more than just a picture that you find online or a picture that you take on a camera. PowerPoint can be used for so many things. If you like this video, I hope you will give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button uh, next to it and the bell next to it. You'll get notified every time I post a new video in data design, usually PowerPoint, Excel, or Word. I had a great time making this for you and I can't wait to see you all next time.